our company name is uh, Success Bridge. We are located in uh, Bangalore, Koramangala. Okay, so our motto is uh, learn, grow, succeed. So we basically wanted to provide a platform to the angsters, uh, the people who have already expertise uh, to or like and break the gap of the uh, industry. So about Success Bridge, uh, Success Bridge was founded and managed by the industry experts. Experts is nothing but who have more than uh, more than ten to twelve years of experience in the VLSI industry. VLSI industry. Okay, the Success Bridge is uh, industry aligned training company. We basically offers VLSI training and placement programs. As I told, why we basically say training and placement we basic we focus on not only on the training our training basically work on the placement mode so how it works i will be able to let you know in the upcoming slides so to address the current gaps in the industry so uh, we have a clear vision and mission which will help us uh, to get success so our vision we wanted to be a recognized leader in the industry by providing the knowledge skills and confidence and empowering the individuals so these are the basic requirements of a person to kick start the career in the uh, industries as you know how the market is rapidly changing to reach to our vision we have a mission we basically uh, to reach our vision what is the mission we basically focus now we will provide uh, high quality services user friendly training services i can say what is the user friendly I'll, I'll take an example uh, user friendly is nothing but our trainings are uh, for example if you take online trainings our our trainings are uh, live sessions and we will give those live sessions to the people uh, i mean we will record and we'll give the training sessions to the people who got enrolled so it's like an user friendly when, whenever you have you can access it so and it will have the productivity enhance and profitability of the individuals so we aim to cultivate a diverse uh, and inclusive community that values collaboration. We basically, you know, collaborating with many colleges, okay, where we can uh, 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 like fulfill the gaps of uh, like an industry. So with these are basic trainings in VLSI we provide. So in our trainings we provide design verification, design for test testability, physical design, and uh, analog layout. Okay, now we are here today. We are here. To, uh, uh, we as we are going to start our new training batch for the design training and program uh, batch for these design for testability. So these are I don't want to take your much time of this because the main content is ahead where your trainer is waiting for. So yeah, I'll take up this uh, the content what you basically these are the glimpse of the content. Design verification will cover digital system design introduction to D, uh, HDL VHDL. Very low concepts, system very low concepts, and uh, uh, the UVM concepts. Everything will be with the examples and the uh, studies. The DFT we have anyhow. Uh, your trainer will will uh, let you know the curriculum. What we basically take it up. Just have a glimpse. So we will will cover introduction to DFT, full ASIC flow, boundary scan, scan depth, JTAG, basics of MBIST, LBIST. This is about physical design, uh, physical design synthesis for plan. I is able to analog layout okay so apart from this we basically concentrate on uh soft skills as well so weekly once or monthly thrice we'll plan we'll plan for different aspects we basically to uh, work on the communication or soft skills part as well because being if you have a uh, good communication like a technical part but if you are not able to deliver them in a proper way but if you have an uh, a stage fear uh, this will really impact your place, uh, your uh, interviews as well. So we basically, uh, on, I mean, we basically work out on the, the communication skills. So it, these communication skills includes uh, talking skills or uh, listening skills or many things, and personality development, presentation skills. So we will make you to prepare weekly ones, like an individual will be having individual presentations, group presentations. Okay. So it sometimes we have the uh, uh, on-spot uh, presentations and public speaking. It, this, this, these things will help you to come out of the stage fear. And email writing, etiquette, how to write an email, what would be the etiquette of an email writing, 
and the interview skills which is uh, one of the basic and important requirement in the current market we will be having in mock interviews with our trainer as well as our industry experts which will help you to come out of the stage fear and you will be knowing what would be the expecting of an co company and all okay so this is what a selection process how we will take up the selection process so you have to apply on the website uh, we will review the application then in the admission process will be there then your job job oriented training placement starts so before i move to the next slide so i wanted you to uh, someone to say something so what is your expectation from success bridge can anyone if you wanted to be part of the training this training program so what is your expectation what is your outcome you are expecting hello can anyone speak up what is the expectation of your it is just a learning part okay and uh, it will uh, boost our confidence to get a job okay any anyone else see let me ask you the question again so for example if you wanted to join that success bridge what is your ex what what you are expecting what is your outcome we wanted you to be and our com imp and uh, improve our co communication skills okay may know your name please arvin arvin thanks arvin so anyone else because before i move to the next slide i wanted to oh, listen i mean i wanted to get some information from you guys yeah mainly for the job yes this is what i basically wanted to uh, hear from you guys see it's like basically you wanted to have a biryani without uh, without not even using your uh, uh, starting cooking it is it possible i it totally agree the main content is for the job itself but before that for example if you wanted to have a biryani right so we would, we would like to prepare it we will be have we need to add multi things in it and that you, that need to be cooked, cooked in a proper way then only the biryani will be uh, will be uh, prepared right i have given an example why because the biryani is nothing but the job which you are expecting but there are many outcomes which is required to uh, to cook a biryani in the same way there are many things which is basically required to start or to get a job that i'll let you know in the next slide yes this is what our specification uniqueness what is basically is totally different from the other institution why you should choose the success bridge okay i'll i'll, I'll see i, I think uh, everyone can view my uh, screen right okay ss yes. yeah so see let me take okay so now i'll just take up the three things here i as you know ki trainers we have the tools real time projects module wise assignments soft skills okay and we'll uh, and let, i will will find as i will highlight a couple of things the first one the trainer the trainer with whom we are panel they are the employees of product based companies they are not the they are not the uh, trainers or the others uh, they are the the people who have more than my experience of 10 12 years the other one the main in, in thing is the maximum count of a batch should be 15 to 20 students not more than that this will give the individual focus and the uh, we will we can make the placements the other one which uh, which everyone uh, told you right 100% placement support will be there till everyone get placed so for example some people will take first attempt some people will get placed in second third attempts some people may take some time to get placed but we are there to help everyone everyone till they get placed okay so these are our partners i will just uh, run the session so edia partners we have synopsis and we are uh, we have a mentor present as well so if you wanted to know our placement partners please visit our website we have the companies mentioned over there where our people are already got placed and we already have uh, approximate 20 new companies this year we already am panel for the placements so this is to contact us now i just wanted to take up i wanted mr uh, let me introduce your trainer so uh, i'll just uh, stop sharing my screen so let me introduce your trainer now so uh, so uh, ganesh so we have our uh, your bf i mean vlsa dft trainer so he is uh, our cto as well 
so he is having around 12 plus years of experience into VLSA DFT industry. So he is currently empaneled with one of the reputed product based company. Okay. So uh, hi, Ganesh. Hello, Yusuf. Hi, yeah, everyone. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Uh, this is uh, NGK uh, and Ganesh Kumar. I'll be your host of the day. So I'll be taking care of your technical DFT training as well as the demo session for today. OK, so I don't want to uh, go more about myself, uh, but uh, I would like to give a small introduction that uh, I'm the co-founder of Success Bridge and uh, the CTO currently uh, handling all the technical aspects of Success Bridge. OK, so we handle uh, multiple domains in Success Bridge in terms of training because there is a big gap in between uh, the academic uh, and to enter into semiconductor. So we fill the gap. So anybody who's interested into coming into semiconductor has to go through uh, the tool oriented training. OK, so we'll discuss today on why, uh, why you need the training, first of all, and how do you enter into semiconductor with this training? OK, and how we will help you in the process okay so all the queries will be answered end of the session okay so you can post your questions in the uh, chat window okay all the questions will be answered we will have some time enough time to answer all the questions okay so when when i'm presenting i may not be see uh, who is going to raise your hand okay so uh, it would be better we'll discuss all the queries in the end of the session i hope uh, it is okay with everybody yeah Cody. yes Cody. yeah you have raised a hand arvin please unmute okay let's start So everybody can see my screen? Yes, sir. Yeah. OK. So uh, we are going to have an agenda of the session where we will be discussing about VLSA, design life cycle, role of DFT in the VLSA, and the opportunities in the industry, our scope through these courses. And we'll have the Q&A session, end of the session, OK? So first of all, the VLSA design flow, I'm keeping it very simple. The presentation will be very simple for any a basic person who can understand, any engineering graduate can understand. So uh, I'm not going into uh, advanced technical concepts here. So whatever you have learned in your academics, either you have learned or it is new for you, you can easily understand. So what we're discussing today is how a chip is being designed. What is the process of designing an IC? OK, because we are into semiconductor. So the work of a semiconductor is to design ICs, manufacture ICs. So designing and manufacturing, OK, we have two things. Now, designing part is more important because you come up with an idea, specification, OK, and you architect it, and then you write a code for it. Then you verify the code, you synthesize it, OK? And you give it to the foundry, and you get an IC. This is a basic flow. There are many more uh, steps added into the process, but this is a basic flow. I'm just trying to uh, be very uh, basic, OK? So in this process, if we are going into a little bit
I hope everybody is able to see the screen without an issue. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Right. So this is SOC design flow from where we start the system design. Okay. We need spec. We start RTL design. Okay. RTL design outcomes will be RTL constraints. The test bench will be given for logic synthesis. Logical synthesis is done. We get a netlist constraints and VCD file. Then here comes the DFT. Okay. So DFT role is for design for testing. So why we need DFT? We'll be discussing it going forward. Okay. The way DFT comes in a place where it is not entirely into the front end or entirely into the back end of the semiconductor design. Okay. So we are the bridge between front end and back end. So we have both insertion and post manufacturing testing methodology also. So we'll be discussing it going forward. So once the DMT implementation is done, we provide the netlist and constraints to physical design. So floor planning, placement and optimization, routing. Okay. And all of this till the finish stage. Okay. This entire role is played by physical design team. And once the verification is done, this is post manufacturing testing team and assembly team. Okay. So let's concentrate more on our DFT part. So there are already two things called verification and testing. Okay. So first of all, why we need uh, to test the design. So you have written RTL code in Verilog or VHDL. Okay. For any full, full header or a, um, any any uh, module, let's say a counter, okay, or any medical operation that you have written, okay, for that you have written RTL code, you want to test it. So first you have to uh, inform or uh, you have to give the tool the specifications, including the libraries and the RTL, so that the tool performs the verification. Now to verify an RTL code, you need to write the test bench. Okay. So test bench is something where you have to provide the stimuli and check the output. Okay. So that is the role of a verification engineer. So verification engineer cannot test internal nodes. He can only test the primary inputs. Uh, he can drive the drive through primary inputs and check the output through primary outputs. He cannot have any access in between inside the logical gates. Okay. So the gate to gate connections cannot be tested. So you don't know that it is passed. The test is verified and it is passing, but it is not guaranteed that the functionality is working fine. Okay. So the verification, even though if we have verification, we are still needing the testing methodology because after manufacturing or when we're going to manufacture and the design, whatever we have designed, we are seeing multiple manufacturing defects. Because of these manufacturing defects, all the ICs are being scrapped. So let's say if we are designing 10,000 ICs and uh, I mean, if you're trying to manufacture 10,000 ICs and almost 5,000 to 6,000 ICs are being scrapped because of multiple defects. Okay. So th that is a huge loss to the manufacturer, to the customer, the client, whoever is uh, holding this design. Okay. So we want to reduce the manufacturing defects and detect the manufacturing defects earlier in the design phase only. Okay, so to defect, detect the defects, manufacturing defects earlier in the design, we have come up with a concept called 
design for test dft so dft is 80 percent tool oriented okay so you don't need to write an rtl code you don't need to write a test bench okay so the job of rtl design and verification engineer is separate dft engineer will come in this stage where the tools we have synopsis mentor graphics cadence eda tools in the market okay so every company holds this uh, eda tools and we do dft insertion okay so there are stages in dft insertion where it's a methodology dft is a methodology so we just use the tool to execute uh, the insertion process and we try to add test logic okay so why we add test logic we'll go and see in the ne next slides so the process of determining whether a device or circuit is functioning correctly or is defective that is a main uh, agenda of adding a dft next device can be defective because it does not function as designed or specified okay because you you cannot know it uh, as a verification engineer if just he just gives primary input inputs to the primary input as uh, one and zero and is expecting output of one okay so internally anything could have happened in silicon because in the laptop when you try to do something it's a physical, it's a normal design it's a virtual design until it, the design is into the silicon into cmos design proper uh, cmos design the physical design okay you will not be able to know the process variance and temperature effective defects okay so those defects coming to picture during manufacturing and the reasons could be either your functionality is wrong okay you did not verify the functionality and you did not go inside each and every node and check whether there is any stuck at fault or a transition fault okay so that you will be able to know through dft so get dft guarantees ic quality so many of you are using i mean everybody is using uh, mobile phones nowadays right so if your mobile phone is heated up you have some issue with the mobile phone and you went to the uh, technician under the guarantee okay so if you have a warranty and you just go into the technician and he says that motherboard has some issue it has to be sent to the manufacturing and uh, if you have warranty you can claim it now first your mobile has to be refurbished it has to be fixed right he's not going to give you a new new phone so if a mobile has to be refurbished what we do so the design i mean the mobile soc has to be testable testable means you should be able to access the design from primary input that means pin uh, the ic pins okay so you should be able to access internal data or inter internal design of the ic through the external pins so that is possible through usb so every mobile has usb through usb we have we enter into the ic and first thing that we touch is the boundary scan it is a dft methodology the test methodology okay that is a j tag okay so boundary scan is a concept where you uh, provide testable testability feature to the entire pins of the ic okay let's say ic has 64 pins all the 64 pins internally are connected properly through a circuit methodology dft methodology where from external world that means you are trying to access it from usb you can directly get access to the internal uh, modules and you can test where the ic has been burned or some uh, uh, read or write lines of memories has been burned or certain memory has been burned 
So all this information can be known when we add this testability logic. So DFT helps you in the pre-silicon and post-silicon also. Silicon is something where once the silicon means once whatever you have designed uh, your IC, all the design is physically implemented on the wafer and your IC is ready. That is silicon. Okay. So that guarantee is provided through DFT. If DFT is not there, your mobile phones do not get warranty. Any electronic device in which is having an IC with a processor inside will not get the guarantee or a warranty. Okay. So enhances profit because you are trying to reduce all the manufacturing defects pre-silicon itself. That means before going to manufacturing itself, you are trying to reduce all the manufacturing defects through DFT. Okay. Then you will have less scrappage. Okay. If you are, if you are going to manufacture 10,000 ICs, let's say or uh, MI, MI OPPO, any company is going to manufacture 10,000 or 1 lakh ICs at a time. Okay. Then he has the highest uh chance of having good ICs. That means out of 10,000, 9,500 are good ICs and only 500 are defective. That's a 95% success ratio you have. Okay. That is called yield. Okay. So in any manufacturing industry, we call yield. Yield is something how much you have uh how much uh, outcome you have that is of high quality that can be shipped to the customer okay out of total manufacturing that you have done okay so that will save lot of money now coming to dft uh, methodology dft means design for test or testability to enhance the ability to test the design so an action of placing test features in a chip design during the design process. Okay. We will add these test features into the design, existing design that RTL design has, uh, RTL design engineer has written it. Okay. So we just add additional logic. Okay. So how we add, what we add, we'll be discussing going forward. So that is done by the tool, EDA tool. We are going to learn through the course is how we handle the tool okay to add this dft methodology so dft is the best course in the entire semiconductor where even a software csc background triply uh, civil mechanical person also can learn and he can get a job okay and it is the highest paid uh, domain in the semiconductor Okay, it's need more smartness in terms of you have to be smart enough to identify deep bugs when the tool throws in errors or tool throws the issues that okay this is the there is a issue identified so we have a solution through the tool itself we have to fix it through tool again so that knack and uh, smartness you should have to be part of DFT and excel in this domain. Again, it is a methodology that ensures the design works properly after manufacturing also. Okay. So post manufacturing, as I said, a mobile phone is having an issue. You go to the technician or if your laptop is having an issue, you go to the technician. So post manufacturing, if he has to identify that your motherboard is having so and so issue, a sensor is gone, your display is gone for that. Also, he has to connect your device to the system. And whatever DFT finally released the uh, test patterns. Okay. So DFT will give you, uh, give the semiconductor unit the final test patterns, stating that your design is 100% testable or at least 99 or 95% testable. Okay. So that patterns can access in and out of your IC. That will be used post manufacturing to 
enter into any corner of the IC and stay, uh, say that, OK, this particular sensor is gone, this particular uh, microphone is gone, your, uh, your display is gone, your RAM, ROM, any of these individual ICs are gone, can be uh, removed, resoldered, and have a new IC there replaced. So first, you need to understand where the issue is and to what extent it is uh, the issue has gone. And can we replace it, refurbish, or entirely uh, scrap it? So all this will be known to the uh, manufacturer only when you have DFT technology inside the design. So DFT provides controllability and observability of internal nodes of a chip. So controllability and observability of internal nodes of a chip is something that you have an AND gate. And two input AND gate has two inputs and one output, right? So the two inputs are each uh, nodes. So totally, the uh, AND gate, two input AND gate has total three nodes, two inputs and one output. So two inputs has to be in our control in a later day, uh, later day in the sense of post manufacturing, stating that, OK, I want to know whether this IC is still working or uh, somebody has complained that the user has complained that my IC is gone. Now you that IC, taking an example, IC is having only the AND gate. OK, so you have, you have to test the AND gate. You should be able to go and reach to the AND gate inputs and put a value like 1, 0, 0 output. OK, 1, 1, 1 output. So you have to again test it. OK. So this uh, controllability of reaching that particular node somewhere in the design out of millions and trillions of uh, AND gates in the real time ICs. OK, so to reach and every to reach every node and gain controllability, OK, we need DFT. OK, and observability is something you have given one and one to the AND gate input. And you want to observe one as the output, as per the uh, truth table of the AND gate. So that is a functional behavior. So the, if, you re, if you are getting one with a one and one input, then your design is perfect. If you are getting zero, that means you are, you are not able to observe the value. The expected value is one, and your simulated value is zero. Then there is a fault. OK, so that control build observability we will try to bring to an entire chip through DFT. OK, so in the process of DFT, we, we do generate vectors. Vector will have uh, the stimuli and response captured, stating that your entire design is 100% uh, controllable and observable, or combinedly, it is a testable. OK, so uh, we'll also help them reducing the cost of test. So as I said before, controllability means ability to place nets, nodes, gates, or sequential elements to a known state. That means you can access any gate inside your entire uh, 1 million or a 10 million gate IC. OK, you will be able to go and reach into any of the gate and just uh place a known value that means you can change the value of that particular gate that is controllability similarly observability is to observe the output okay that has been driven to a known logical state so i'm not going to discuss more on this and it might be too much for you as a beginners so dft has this methodology scan MBIST, LBIST, IDDQ testing, etc. There are many other things okay, that will be learning part of your design. So this is a DFT flow. We divide pre-silicon and post-silicon. Pre-silicon is where you are still in the design phase. Your design is being still tested. We do multiple iterations like uh, RTL design engineer has written the code for the first time. 
for that particular IC, okay, let's say it's a mobile SOC. Uh, we can take a client of Intel and a customer is some uh, NVIDIA, okay. Now NVIDIA came up with a specification and idea and he is asking Intel to, I want this IC to be designed, okay. Then Intel takes up the project. Now NVIDIA becomes the client, okay. Or you can say it, uh, NVIDIA becomes a customer, okay. And uh, Intel has to provide IC design and deliver to the customer. Now, the RTL engineer, the first stage of uh, starting an IC uh, after the architecture, RTL design engineer starts writing the code for your SOC. But nothing happens in a one go, okay. He uses the same EDA tools to start writing the code. Okay. Now, in the very first version of uh, writing the code, will not be perfect. So he will take up to 10 turns 0, 0 0.0, 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, until he reaches 1.0. So there are 10 releases. Okay. 10 RTL releases that has to go through. The entire cycle of uh, VLSA stages. Okay. So, RTL engineer, verification engineer, DFT engineer, STA engineer, physical design engineer. So, this first 0, 0.0 to 1.0, these 10 versions of RTL will has to go multiple iterations until it gets uh, the RTL is stable and matured that, okay. This is the final. There will not be any further changes to the code. This is the final code. Okay. All that happens in a pre silicon. All these iterations on the VLSA flow. So, again, post silicon is something. The physical design team is the last stage of VLSA stage where they say that I have converted all your logic, whatever RTL you have written and whatever DFT has inserted logic, everything into CMOS design. Now it is physical design. Everything, every design is now physical. There cannot be any change further. And we are going to deliver this to the tester. Okay. So before delivering to tester, you need to generate patterns. Okay. So that patterns, we have to generate. DFT plays a key role in generating post silicon patterns. And some companies will hire post silicon validation team. Okay. That is a separate designation. Okay, so people uh, in that role has to take the patterns or uh, the DFT inserted design and generate patterns, simulate them. And once the simulations are passing at our end virtually, then we give it to the tester. So on the tester also, it, it should pass. So test data is something like this. Okay, this is your IC. Okay, so ATP is a concept within DFT, automatic test pattern generation, where tool will do. The reason it is called automatic test pattern generation is, as I said, 80% of the work is done by the tool. You have to configure the tool to perform these operations. Should have the knowledge of what happens if tool uh, targets a certain logic, how it is targeting. So there is a methodology, there is an algorithm a small algorithm for pattern generation, basic algorithm in four steps. Okay. Even a fifth class student can learn that easy. Uh, so these four steps tool will follow and tool will target uh, each and every logic node of the entire design. And this will become your stimuli and this will become your response. So both of this will be captured in one file called vector file. Okay, so these test vectors are delivered to the tester. So on the tester again, they will be tested. So on the tester, we test on a wafer level. Okay, so tester is something that you, once you reaching tester, that means you have a physical IC. Okay, so this is your wafer. It will be in a circle shape. Okay, cross section into multiple small, small dies. Each die is your original IC. That means your Intel processor, AMD processor, whatever, your entire IC will be in, on this particular 
uh, die. Okay, so depending on the size and shape of your IC, the wafer will be cut through by the machine. Okay, so this is a silicon wafer. So in the course, we will be discussing detailed stages of what is happening and how we are going through these stages, everything. Okay, so as a beginning, as a demonstration i don't want to go in depth i'm just going uh, on a basic level okay so this is a die coming out of wafer and this die will become your ic after packaging like this okay now uh, coming to the opportunities in this industry semiconductor world is so small small in the sense the market is huge small because we lack engineers people are not much interested in semiconductor i don't know the reasons because lack of awareness i would say so even the ec students are going into the uh, software jobs triple people also going into the software jobs the ec triple is the core of semiconductor their core job is semiconductor, but people tend to go to software because of various reasons. But uh, as you can see, India is going growing too much and started investing in semiconductor. And India is now the semiconductor hub with a huge funding. Already semiconductor uh, fabrication units started in Gujarat, Tamil Nadu. Okay, next we are going to have in Hyderabad very soon. So there are many fabrication units coming into the uh, India. So India is growing a lot, and we have many openings with the less number of candidates. So let's say we have 10 openings, and we have only one candidate, suitable candidate for that job. So we are into 1 is to 10 ratio, where only one candidate is available for 10 jobs. OK. so. To design an IC, we need around 100 engineers, one IC, that means one project. For one project, we need 100 engineers. OK, in that, RTL engineers will be around 20, verification engineers 20, physical design engineers will be 25 to 30, DFT engineers will be around 20 again, and post silicon validation and testing engineers will be around 20. So it will the count the total number of engineers all together sitting on a project will be more than 100 not less than that okay so we need more engineers there are multiple projects multiple ICs are getting designed every second in the world okay throughout the world okay so we have many opportunities in the industry so as you know to the public, those who have no idea on the semiconductor, they know what are the technologies latest we are seeing in IoT, IoT sector, in terms of healthcare, security, transportation, automation, okay, the defense, okay. These are the few companies that we see in India: ST Microelectronics, Intel, Synopsys, Cisco, Texas Instruments, Cadence, Microchip, National Semiconductors, ARM. Um, there are these are the top companies that we talk about these are all product based companies i, I did not list semiconductor because we have a total around 800 2000 in between companies throughout the world okay uh, i think more than that but in india we have almost 500 to 600 companies including services okay majority of them are in hyderabad bangalore pune noida Gujarat, Ahmedabad, Delhi, Mumbai, yep. So even Vizag, Vizag, we have service companies. OK, so I don't want to go in depth of technologies. OK, as this, this is a demo, I will just go through the course content, what we'll be learning. This is our course content. Introduction to DFT. DFT basics will cover ASIC flow in detail. DFT basics, the chip fabrication process, and AT. AT is the automatic test equipment. Okay, the final tester. This is a tester. 
and this is a first methodology that you learn in scan scan insertion and we have lab with synopsis eda tools that we use for real time projects okay and scan compression that is a, another advanced methodology within scan okay hierarchical scan comes part of your scan architecture and after that pattern generation and what is the basics of pattern generation what is a there is only one algorithm atp algorithm okay and uh, how faults are faults are categorized okay and how do we target through the tool okay and we do some simulations at our end whatever the patterns that we generated we want to uh, make sure that this patterns are validated and genuine okay so these are all methodologies that you learn throughout your course so one more thing i wanted to say that why you have to learn all of these because in semiconductor unlike software there will not be any special training given once you get in into the semiconductor semiconductor will not have internal trainings again that is the reason even if you are being selected from a iit triple iit nits into top companies uh, from the campus interview you get a job as intern okay semiconductor never hires directly a fresher into the junior engineer job it will take you as a intern from any top university top college once you do one year of internship if your internship is validated and you are efficient enough and they have opening a permanent opening for that position okay to hire a junior engineer they will convert your internship into junior engineer so let's say 100 people of iit has been taken from uh, by intel company after one year they have only five openings in the group or 10 openings in the group maximum that is the maximum so far okay because i worked more on more in intel for almost this is my eighth year in intel itself only intel company that i worked uh, i have worked in other companies only in intel i have eight years of experience so i have seen that we hire and the manager where i hire people from all the co companies but we have a criteria that uh we have to definitely hire uh interns from the top universities limited okay but we will not make them permanent because we will not have openings for interns we cannot put interns in the projects remember that we don't keep interns in the projects okay we need senior engineers at least who are trained on the tool okay so companies will have openings outside of the campus interview outside campus interview. that means which are not from the campus interview direct walk ins or uh, junior engineer openings so they expect a six plus uh, six months of proper tool oriented training that have been taken okay so they need a trained engineer trained fresher then they will interview okay on the tool okay what you have learned on the tool how the tool is performing what is the methodology behind it okay done you have answered basic 10 questions on the tool you are in that is the way you get in into semiconductor okay so you cannot just enter into semiconductor as a college fresh graduates because our academics has no information on what is a real time semiconductor methodologies what we learn in academics from the ec or triple e backgrounds is very basics very basics and mixed we have communications signals and systems uh vlsi mpmc all these subjects are multi domains in the uh, electronics domain semiconductor purely will have only vlsi design subject in btech okay 
or if you have done masters you will have separate topic of uh, specialization into vlsa that will have a proper vlsa learning that even that mtech also has only few part of uh, the real time semiconductor this dft engineering or a sem physical design verification rtl are very less and the tools are so costly the eda tools are so costly that colleges will not afford as the colleges don't afford colleges cannot provide you the tool training okay so you have to come learn from a training institute and then get a job that is how it is semiconductor is everybody has come into semiconductor with the same process okay All right any questions that you may have thank you, uh, thank you ganesh so before we move to this uh, q and a session so hi everyone so there is a google form uh, is being pasted in the chat box in the in, i mean call messages i would suggest request everyone to fill your details over there so this will help us to share our upcoming training updates and any uh, any uh, like in future upcoming event that can be shared over the email or the call so i would suggest please fill the fill the google form which is mentioned in the uh, uh, chat box yeah so as we told right we are going to uh, the main intention of starting this uh, demo demo is we are going to start our new uh, vlsa dft training and placement program batch from uh, 29th of this month so we already started the registrations uh, on or before demo itself uh, approximate 8 10 registr registrations already done so I, I would suggest i would request whoever is interested after this uh, uh, demo we can contact our uh, uh, i mean operations or sales team and please make the registrations as soon as possible as we told the maximum headcount of a batch would be 15 to 20 students so once we reach our uh, headcount we are not going to take up any more registrations okay thank you yeah, Ganesh, please go ahead yeah thank you so i'm going to start answering two queries because i know as a beginners uh, you will have more queries you will keep less concentration on the training uh, de demonstration so i will answer questions directly whoever have questions you can either text in the chat window or you can ask me by unmuting okay hi hi ganesh yes Raj. And, yes go ahead and my question is we have different that is fields in vlsi one is yes. dv pd and DFT as well as analog layout also. Yeah, among these, which has uh, job market, that is, I mean, which has more number of openings? Which has more number of openings? Uh, I would I would like to explain that. So let me just share one more presentation. So everybody can see the screen. Yes, yes, finished. Okay, I'm. I don't have DFT in this image, but DFT comes in this stage uh, after functional design and logic design before PD. Okay. Now, uh, in the semiconductor, analog has a less less count as of now, less uh, openings as of now. Uh, the next is I'm coming from less to the highest. Okay. The next lesser is RTL design engineers because they have abandoned. They have abandoned RTL design engineers. RTL design is the only thing that is part of your academics. Even in BTEC also, you will write an RTL code, the Verilog VHDL code, right? So they can hire a diploma candidate also to write an RTL code. Okay. Given that, second thing. Uh, the next uh, to the least, I think these are the two. Okay, 
Next goes the STA, static timing analysis. Sometimes the seniors in the field, they leave or they get saturated, they quit the companies, then the openings comes for STA. Otherwise, STA will have openings randomly. Okay. Individual STA people hire less people. Our companies hire less people. Okay. Because STA comes part of your entire physical design as well. It is also part of physical design. A physical design engineer has to do both uh, LV, PV uh, placement and routing with physical verification and uh, uh, STA as well. STA is the first step they start with, right? So STA is part of physical design. So physical design has more scope. We are coming to the highest uh, openings. Physical design, verification design, and DFT is the highest. DFT is having the highest openings because DFT is something that you uh, don't change the domains. Let's say STA, you have learned they migrate to physical design. Okay, the PNR. Now, uh, verification engineers come into DFT, they migrate to DFT, but DFT engineer will not go into any domain. So, DFT openings are so high because you need more testing engineers in terms of insertion. So, and DFT engineer no need to go to any fab. He don't need to work in the lab because he's not a post manufacturing person. Okay, DFT is not post manufacturing. The benefit of DFT is that you get post manufacturing benefits, but DFT engineer will not go into lab or fab. Okay, there is a separate uh, genre called test engineers, pure ATE test engineers. Okay, there will be separate hiring for that. Okay, so they work on testers, they have to go into uh, with a proper suit, lab suit, they have to work in the labs, in the fabs or labs. Okay, so DFT, verification, and physical design, these are the three top openings that you have in the market. Next. Thanks, Kanish. Yep. So coming to the chart window, I'm seeing uh, So is DFT used after fabrication or chip or in design part? So DFT is inserted is part of insertion in between RTL uh, design to the physical design. We do that DFT. So it is in design part. We don't do in fab post fabrication. The benefit of DFT insertion in the design stage gives you post manufacturing testing, which will be done by, uh, let's say, Post manufacturing, IC is designed. After that, IC has to be tested, right? Tested, okay. You see all the uh, electronic devices or anything that you buy in the market, they are stamped with okay tested, right? That is done by diploma guys, okay? Uh, they are hired into the uh, manufacturing industry, okay? On a daily basis, they do that, okay? So we are not that test engineers. We are insertion in the insertion stage okay so we just have to know our uh, the prerequisite of dft is that you should know uh you should understand what is an rtl code in verilog you should understand what is a verilog code basically at least at least you should know uh to write a basic rtl code for an and gate or gate there at least half header full header or a flip-flop okay and entire semiconductor is based on this combination logic gates and flip flops and latches. You should have an idea what is a flip flop, D flip flop, and D latch. That's it. If you know all the combination logic gates, D flip flop, and D latch, you are good. And some clock basics how clock is coming, what is a PLL, all this that you will be learning part of your course end to end. Next, do we get job as an intern or full time through Success Bridge? You can join as an intern six months, okay, or a full time six months. Either otherwise, from for the college students, 
those who are con uh, currently studying BTEC first year, second year, third year, fourth year, they can join as an intern. They have some flexibility. And the course here is six months. Four months is a course duration. Two months is for 